Hey, welcome to Coffee and Tools. This week, uh, we're doing a review on a metal cutting saw <coughs> from Harbor Freight. Mm. This was a pretty reluctant situation. Very few tools. I usually like to buy a tool, but this was kind of a, I gotta have it, I need it, I got a job going on, I don't wanna spend a lot of money, so off to Harbor Freight. The Harbor Freight carries about three sizes of these things. A real small one that does a really small amount of metal, which seems kind of, sorry, but useless to me. They have about a $49 one that's kind of like the middle of the range, and I almost purchased it, but when I found out it could only cut up to like two inch uh, material, again, it's not gonna work. I'm cutting two and a half inch material and square tubing and some other various sizes. So it was like, well, let's just, you know, let's buy the big one. It's a uh, three and a half horse, yeah, 14 inch. Look at this picture, and you'll notice there's a saw with a blade, and when you buy this, I guess you think that's what you're buying. Apparently, at Harbor Freight, uh, somebody didn't bother to mention that, uh, even when I check out, that, uh, by the way, the saw doesn't come with a blade. So when I rushed the saw back to the job site and got there and found out that there was no blade, I had to go back. I went back to Harbor Freight. They didn't have any blades in stock for the saw. <laughs> they have about six of these, but no blades. So that was in uh, Texas City, as a matter of fact. Yeah, may as well give out some names. Uh, spoke to the manager, complained, of course. Doesn't do any good, because he's just a manager of a store. So what, you know. So then I had to uh, go over to Lowe's. And over at Lowe's, they had lots of blades for me. So I could actually select DeWalt or Norton or, you know, whatever brand name I wanted, a 14-inch blade for the Harbor Freight saw <clears throat> from Chicago Electric. Uh, the review is going to be kind of a mix, uh, mixed bag of things, but there's a couple of things that are really bad with the saw that uh, almost took it back just because of it. But overall, it's it's just a cheap saw, $119 without the coupon, and it's a cheap piece of crap. It just really is. But to get the job done, I, it'll do. So I already took it out of the box, of course, because I've been using it for a month. And in fact, here's the thing. It comes with one tool, this little gadget right here, the uh, Allen key. The problem with the Allen key is there's no place on this great big saw, there's no place to store this key, so you'd have to make something or cut a hole to drop it into something or whatever, because I like to keep my tools with my tools. You know, if the key belongs to that, I like to keep it with that, and the first thing I noticed was they don't provide any way to store this with the saw, so that was kind of like... Apparently they didn't care. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is the plastic handle and it feels really cheap. There's a lock back here, you, you have to pull out, it's like a little plastic lock. Uh, first couple times using the saw, the vibration set this off and this little guy unscrewed himself and went rolling across the floor. So that already told me, yeah, it's a cheap tool from Harbor Freight, I guess. This is Chicago Electric. They are always inexpensive, and so even a three and a half horsepower motor doesn't feel like three and a half horsepower. The 14 inch blade I bought, like I said, was a Norton from Lowe's. So I had ended up three trips before we actually were able to use the saw. The material we're cutting is this uh, two and a half inch type square tubing because I'm putting up a uh, carport, and it came as a kit, which means you have to cut your own material, cut your own sheets, everything. There's no installer uh, in this case. We'll get into that uh, next video. I did really good. I love the carport the way it came out, but I had to buy this thing in order to get the job done uh, in part. So first other thing I'm going to mention right away. This, this right here. It's got a quick release so you can release it back really nicely. Put your metal in slap it up, put your, you know, the lock down, and you can start winding and tightening. And as soon as you do that, this, this pops up immediately. So now your metal's no longer held. That is Harbor Freight. That is really sad. That is pathetic. In fact, all your saws should go back to China or wherever they came from, and you should tell them either make proper casting for this lock or don't bother making a saw because that's pretty sad. I ended up having to hold this down constantly like this with my hand and trying to keep it locked while cutting with my left hand 
they have a button up here that works off the right hand so with the left hand you have to kind of you know monkey around to try to get it unlocked so you can use this useless piece of junk from Harbor Freight. I have never been happy with tools from Harbor Freight and over half of them generally go back for complaints such as this classic piece of junk right here. Uh, my three ton jacks I finally broke down and went to another big box store and bought some three ton jacks because I needed them. I can't wait six months for three ton jacks Harbor Freight. What is wrong with you people? Oh then you'd stop the coupon you don't put the magazine out anymore so I think that Harbor Freight really needs to maybe they need to be just out of the way. You get somebody else to do this sort of thing but the uh, saw in general it feels horrible, it vibrates, it's loud, noisy, and once it gets up to speed, then you can get cutting with it, and it doesn't really seem to have the kind of power. The RPMs drop off really quickly as you start to put this under, under a load, and I'm not cutting really thick material. This is, this is decent, but this is not exactly, you know, quarter inch steel or something, and as, you, as soon as you start into it, you feel the, the bladed immediately. The motor just drops off in RPMs, and of course, you no longer have three and a half horsepower behind that either. And so, when you use this saw, the other thing was this guard is kind of stupid. Uh, I mean, you just put it up like that, and it'll stay out of your way. So I don't know if that's a good feature or not, but you know, that was that was pretty dumb. The spring is a great big chrome spring, and like I said, the whole saw. I mean, it virtually feels like a toy. It just feels so cheap all the way around. The other problem was this here is okay in most cases. You can probably, no, okay, I was going to say maybe you could unbolt and change this. It deflects it directly at the concrete floor or whatever, directly below you, so you're going to get all your spray right concentrated there. In some cases, that's probably okay. In other cases, you might want the spray to go out further or something, and you'd have to modify that. The next thing I want to show you is from the side angle here. I'll maybe have to close, close it in a little bit. Let's get close. Okay. Yeah, so this is the lock that I just showed you that you know, it just it pops when you're tightening, tightening up against your material. And really the biggest problem, I think part of the fault here is this right here. Look at how sloppy that thing is. This pin uh, goes through the slot here, has a little head on it. It's extremely sloppy made, so this whole thing kind of, you know, flops around like a piece of junk that it is. And so when you're working with something like this, that's great. If you're working with a flatter, lower material, this will pop up like this and try to go up over top of your material, which again means it's a piece of junk, you know. They should have done a little bit more precision work with this piece here and the lock would probably work properly if they had if they didn't have all the slop in here that they have with these things. This is just one bad saw. Now you'll notice of course the blade Norton, you know. Uh, Norton's been around for years so I really like them. So between DeWalt, Norton and some of the other manufacturers I picked this one because I, they seem to have a really good reputation in the industry for many many years and so and the blade works great. I'm you know fine with the blade but the rest of this thing uh, I just, I was pretty disgusted. Granted, somebody will say, well, you're only paying $119, but I look at Harbor Freight and think for $119, you know, your crap tools, you should be selling something pretty decent for that price because you have some real cheap junk in that store. And I'll go underneath here, see if I can show, show this to you. So there's the pin that moves up and down with it. And as you can see, I'll just show it to you here. See how sloppy that thing? I mean, it just it just absolutely flops around in there. So it really doesn't. It's not a precision guide or you know a nice mechanical guide or anything like that. It's just a really nasty pin that floats all over the place up here. And again, like I said, this is so typical Harbor Freight. They got three rubber feet, and then you got this big nasty piece of metal that they welded on here. So yeah. I really think we should buy a DeWalt next time around. And there's even some plastic shards already starting to fall off the saw. We're not sure where they're coming from. The motor is, a, is just a typical Chicago electric, cheap plastic casing, brush, brush motor. And it has a really chintzy stop right here to adjust so you can set a, a stop level if you need to. 
it's a miter. It's also said it's a miter. Well, it is a miter, sort of. It's not like a saw where you can take the head and swivel and pivot or something. Uh, what happens here is you have to unbolt the stop here and you change the angle of your stop. So again, uh, yeah, not exactly what I was expecting. Uh, overall, extremely disappointed. I think we'll give her, uh, what is it, one coffee cup mark or something, a uh, rating out of five coffee cups. Yeah, just a nasty piece of cheap crap. Vibration, loud, and this whole thing shakes, shakes quite a bit when we run it. The wheel does, is, is, does a great job because it's Norton. The rest of this thing is just, yeah. Hopefully you guys don't have to go out and buy one of these because if you do, I'd really say, you know, if you can budget it, try to spend the extra money and get a DeWalt or somebody else's brand name. Just don't even go to Harbor Freight. Don't even think about it. It's, unless you've got something that uh, is, you, have, you have a low budget problem or it's a tool you only want to use it once and throw it away, which is usually, it seems like that's the case with something like this. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a bad buy. It really is. So let's get back to contests and giveaways and forget about this nasty headache here. This week at Coffee and Tools, we're giving away a jetpack from Verizon. Free. All you got to do is email coffeeandtools at yahoo.com. Put in the subject line, jetpack, and then just a name and an address, and we'll collect all those numbers and tickets up and we'll see who's got it and we'll ship this out to you for free. There's no charge port or, or no charge cable or anything else with it. It's just the jetpack. That's all we're giving away on this particular one. I've got some really cool stuff coming up. This one here is, just so happens to be the next in line to be uh, going up. This was a refurbished unit, so it's ready to go. It's all tested, checked out. It's good. Uh, what can I tell you about Verizon jetpack? So anyways, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. And sorry about my rant today, but uh, every time I go to Harbor Freight, it seems like this is this is where I end up over and over again. Some of us, like me, just I just never learned. I just every once in a while, I just that cheap tool thing just sucks you right in the door, and then you get this. <laughs> Guys, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.